All right, the Toad Cam Mind Emission Saturday, Chapter Two. Where to take all this? I think um, I say I think a lot as a way of trying to stall for time while I actually think. I should say I am thinking. I am thinking that. Oh boy, try, try to lose a personal habit, even a small personal glitch like that. Uh, it's really hard, but it's 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 an, a wonderful, wonderful feeling when you find that you've gotten past something that was a little tick or hitch that kind of shaped your shaped your presentation. Which leaves us where memory, 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 memory. I think that memory. There I go again. I think memory, memory is uh, central, and. What is NLP about? We can come up with many, many things that NLP is about. But if NLP is about a few things, a small number of things, one of the things that NLP is most about is memory and our relationship to memory. Therefore, it strikes me as being a supremely good idea if NLP is so much and so powerfully about one's relationship to memory, or what one believes memory to be, that we should be a little more precise about what we think about memory. So, let me put it this way. NLP rarely gets very specific about the things that it's talking about in a technical, neuroscientific, psychological kind of way. Uh, I gave you my five-level map. And I think that, <laughs> stop that, uh, it appears to me that NLP has a habit of chunking up when it should be chunking down. So when we should be talking about specifics and instantiations and particulars, for some reason it flips over and starts talking about generalities. And when I see that happen too often, when I see refuge in generalities happen excessively, because I do believe in chunking up, and I think chunking up is a fantastic thing. We should all be great masters of chunking up. But when chunking up becomes the answer to everything, it strikes me that it is a cover for a weakness. Because in any type of interrogative process, whether you're doing uh, strong investigative journalism, police work, psychotherapy, whatever, you've got to really chunk down to the specifics. You've got to get the real specific facts, the real little bitty bitty bits in there. And a good investigator is very careful to be carefully chunking down and assembling the supporting materials before a generalization is made. And a good thinker will always be able to relate high quality generalizations versus just kind of foggy global pull them at your ass generalizations because pull them at your ass generalizations don't have a lot of down chunk structure. They're just appear out of the air. They sounded good. They, they were a, a, a lovely noise to make at the moment. Um, having said that, memory. So NLP needs to be more specific, more chunked down, more precise in what it's talking about when it talks about memory. And imagine a time, whatever. So memory for simple practical purposes, for a nice kind of middle chunk down size place to go, we're talking about three kinds of memory. Okay, One is we're talking about semantic memory. We're talking about dictionary memory, which means You've looking, you're looking at something and you can think of the word for it. Now, you don't go around accessing your dictionary all the time. That's relatively uncommon. You're using other types of memory. But when you're finding the, the word for a thing or the word for a concept or whatever, whatever you have a word for, you're using a dictionary function in your brain, that's one type of memory. I think it's a type of memory that comes in probably first in children. They first learn to identify things by word, and they're very, very pleased. They say cat, dog, apple, milk. And that's a really big deal for them, when they feel the power of their semantic memory coming online. Then you have episodic memory, 
okay, which is what we might call the mind movies, remembering how things went as episodes, as uh, passages through time. So episodic memory might not be semantic at all, but you might remember, oh yeah, this thing and that thing, and these, these things happened in kind of that sequence, and that's, that's the way that was, sort of episodic memory. And the third type of memory is um, procedural memory, which interestingly NLP talks a lot about the unconscious mind, and again it's not very specific about what it means. There are many, many different ways of actually specifying the unconscious. The unconscious is when we speak in the NLP's dialect, and we're talking about the unconscious, I think that's one of those evasive chunking up. Because you can chunk down and you're talking about many different phen phenomena, many different things that could all be unconscious at the moment. Um, simply because they're not being represented in some fairly crystallized form in our mind. Now, episodic memory is, is not, not episodic, episodic memory, I'm sorry, procedural memory, it tends to be what we would consider the most unconscious. It's the stuff we're doing procedurally. We know how to do stuff. So those are just the procedures and processes of living our lives and getting through our lives. We wash our dishes, we have memories of how to wash the dishes, but we don't sit there thinking, well, I'm going to access this memory of how to wash the dishes, I'm going to get the soap and the gloves on and the little scrubby pad, I'm going to wash all the stuff and make sure it's really squeaky clean and put it away. We just do it, okay? So that is um, procedural memory. There is um, something that I find uh, uh, profoundly and obnoxiously annoying in uh, one of my less favorite organizations, the Landmark Forum. It was derived from EST, and they say, and I think what they say is um, fucking stupid, but hey, it's their business, and if they want to be fucking stupid, more power to you, pal, <laughs> but it's not on my watch, okay? They say there's what happened, and there's the memory of what happened, or the story of what happened. There's what happened, and there's the, the story of what happened. Sorry, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, no, there isn't. There's only the story of what happened, because what happened isn't here anymore. What happened's gone. It's in the past. What happened is not the present. What happened is something that we can only reconstruct through stories and accounts because it's not what's before us. So there really is nothing but the story of what happened. So you can't say there's what happened. There isn't a what happened. All that exists in the present is in the present is the story of what happened. Okay, and that's what we call episodic memory episodic memory and our collective episodic memories are the collective stories about what happened. Okay, there's no what happened. What happened is some kind of bizarre, nominalized, non-existent figment of some kind of ass-backwards philosophical imagination. There's not a what happened. Okay, there's only the episodic memory. Otherwise, we would have no idea what anything meant. <laughs> There'd just be all this stuff in front of us, you know, and all we would have, if all you, you stripped away procedural memory and episodic memory, and you're only left with semantic memory, you would just be in this kind of timeless present moment, being able to name all the stuff around you, but you wouldn't know what any of it meant. So I think as good NL, NL peeps, we have to get real clear about the distinction between semantic memory, episodic memory, and procedural memory. And I will go into that in great and exhaustive detail, or maybe not, in some detail, in the next one.